This conference will now be recorded. Okay, the one we are going to see now is a batch of X. How to, uh, what is batch of X? Uh, when you go for batch of X, <coughs> so batch of X is again going to be a, uh, an interface, uh, a standard interface the class must implement. The batch of X is again a standard interface where the class must implement to run the batch uh, to run the Apex code asynchronously. Okay, so when you go for batch of X to process a large volume of data, to process a large volume of data, we go for batch of X. So I have, I have the, uh, I have uh, a thousand records you know, to be processed in a transaction. I have thousand records to be uh, processed in a transaction. Either you perform DML or whatever, there are thousand records. And when you, when you process this, uh, when you run this transaction, when you process this in batch of X transaction, uh, it divides it divides the a process into a different number of uh, small batches right so it divides the whole records the process into different number of batches and each batches will run by default, each batches will process 200 records. So when each batches will run, uh, process only 200 records, then you are going to have uh, five small batches. Right, so when you process 1000 records, then five batches will run, uh, uh, will, will divide the process into five different small batches, uh, small batches, and all these batches will run parallel. All, the, all these batches will run parallel. It's not sequential process. Every Everything will run a parallel as a separate transaction. As a separate transaction, the process will run. When you say separate transaction, then a DM, a governor limits are applicable for each and every transaction individually. We have, a, we have a 150 DML and 200 SOQL because it's asynchronous process. The 200 SOQL and 150 DML is applicable for every small batches when you process thousand records in one transaction like your synchronous process then we have we have all the dml uh, all the governor limits like uh, under soql and 150 dml is applicable right so in case if you are processing say uh, more than 10000 records more than 10000 records in a uh, one transaction so more than 10000 records you are processing in one transaction. So for those 10,000 records, I'm going to apply a DML. For example, I'm going to update more than 10,000 records in one transaction. We cannot do, right? Because the maximum DML rows that you can, uh, that are allowed in one transaction is going to be 10,000. In case if you are more than 10,000, you are going to uh, you know, do DML for in one transaction, then we cannot go with synchronous process. So, Right? In the case of batch of X, 
the 10000 records will be divided will be divided break into different small batches by default each batch will process 200 records then 10000 divided by uh, 200 okay so those many batches will run and all batches will run parallel it means like you process only one batches right how much time it takes right that the where list time you can process large volume of data and each small batches will is going to have a uh, its own governor limit so you will never hit a governor limit when you go with the batch apex process because every transaction is going to have its own governor limit we are just processing 200 records so it is not going to hit a governor limits right never going to get a governor limit to avoid hitting governor limit uh, processing large volume of data we go for batch fx framework we go for batch fx framework and how to uh, run the batch fx we are going to implement the class that's going to have that uh, uh, perform that uh, apex code asynchronously that class is going to implement interface called database dot batchable interface right so it's going to have a interface called database dot batchable interface so let's let me take a quick example uh, right before i uh, move on to example let me explain what are the methods we have in that interface what are the methods we have in the interface the method uh, sorry the interface has three methods three methods that the okay that the class must implement that interface sorry implement that method right the class must provide implementation for the method from that interface the interface is database dot batchable interface the methods are start execute finish start execute finish the method is start execute finish there are three methods okay uh, what is the the first method start method the start method is used to fetch the data it means which data you are going to perform which on which data you are going to perform your dml what is the data you are going to process so we get the data right suppose i need a uh, i said like uh, there are 10000 records or uh, you are going to process then the 10000 records uh, okay how we are going to get from the database then you have that query statement in the start method the sql statement that SQL statement in the start method, you are going to pass as a string to the uh, a database method called get query locator. Okay, you are going to uh, pass the SQL in the form of string uh, for this method, uh, and uh, okay, and you get the data from the object, whatever the data you like to process. There is a limit. Okay, you can perform, you can uh, process this uh, within this uh, start method, batch fx uh, start method. Uh, maximum limit is 50 million, okay, which is a very higher limit compared to your uh, regular governor limit for your synchronous process, which is just 50,000 records maximum you can uh, get in a SQL query. But here it is uh, 50 million, 50 million maximum, right? Even if it is, is a higher limit than your data loader limit data loader is just 5 million it's it's uh, right it's a uh, uh, 50 million basically 50 million record you can process so and what is execute method execute method where you are going to have a uh, actual the logic to be performed right whatever the dml whatever dml you are going to perform whatever the process you like to uh, perform against that data is going to have you are going to have here so just just to have a query statement this, uh, this is going to have business logic and the finish method is it's going to have a logic optionally only if you would like to do any post processing right after the data is processed you'd like to send email uh, uh, right you'd like to uh, send email to, uh, to re reporting uh, uh, the process the status of the process in that case you'll go for uh, any post processing operation you'll uh, have some statement in the finish method else the finish method can be a uh, can be a an empty block. It just you have a method. That's it. Just implement that method, but will not have any uh, body inside it, right? But optionally, you'll implement you will have a body for this method. 
so start method is to get the data uh, from the database and execute method whatever uh, logic you like to perform against those data okay and that's how it runs right suppose i get a, a thousand records in my start method then i said like a thousand records will be divided into uh, five batches by default small batches right and the execute method the execute method there are five execute method will run that's how the uh, process will run right so for every small batches the execute method will run so when i say small batches it's nothing but your execute call it's nothing but your execute call so for every execute method will have its own governor limits right so each of these execute method will run as a separate transaction and all execute method uh, process will run uh, okay will run in a will will go to the queue and run because it's asynchronous process right so right uh, we cannot uh, right we cannot predict when this uh, which process will uh, will complete first so right any of the process will done all together will done so it, it depends upon the resource availability so right and each execute method will have its own governor limits right so any number of right maximum 50 million you can uh, fetch in your start query and if you pay, fetch 10,000, then by default 10,000 divided by 200, those my number of execute method will run parallel as a separate transaction. Okay, so so the batch FX is preferred when you are processing a large volume of data because every small set of data uh, that processed by each execute method is going to have its own governor limit. Is that clear? So we'll see a, a quick uh, a complete implementation. We'll see a complete implementation now. Are you able to follow? So I have a I have a class that implements the interface batchable interface. So this is interface name. The whole part, the whole statement is interface name. Database dot batchable, and we have a a parameter here, a subject type, and right that's going to have a three method, right? Which you must provide implementation for the method, a three method. The three method is uh, right. Whatever you're seeing here, start, execute, finish. Start, execute, finish. All the method is going to have an argument uh, to carry the, to to pass the context of the batch. Okay. Uh, every method is going to have the similar argument, batchable context. Uh, okay. The object is going to have, and the execute method is going to have an additional parameter uh, with respect to the the object that you are going to process in the uh, the query inside the start method right how we are going to uh, execute the query here so you're going to have a you're going to have a right uh, you are going to pass sql as a string get query locator so inside which you are going to pass uh, sql in the form of string So, so this example, uh, suppose my requirement is to, uh, I'm going to get the data from the opportunity. What are the opportunities? Opportunities that are, that are closed last and uh, uh, that are modified last week. Okay. What are the opportunities uh, that are modified last week and marked as closed last? So every week I get 
I know a lot of opportunities uh, that goes to the last. Okay, we lost a lot of opportunities every week. Then I would like to uh, delete. Uh, now from the the next day week beginning, I would like to get all the data and delete it. So that's my requirement. I like to get all the last week data which are marked as close last, and I would like to delete by using batch of x. Right, the batch of x is going to run by every uh, you know the day uh, beginning of the week. So we'll see how to schedule the batch of x. Uh, right, so the okay my my business uh, you know create uh, opportunity records. Uh, every week, then uh, you know if I use synchronous process, that may hit a ground limit, right? Suppose I get say more than 10,000 records, then I cannot go with one transaction and delete it, right? Because uh, only 10,000 uh, rows only you can process in one transaction. So we go for batch of x, you know, as, as, right? assuming I get more than 10,000 records every week, then I go for batch of x process. So in the start query, you have to you have to pass get the data from the database so what data i would like to get whatever the uh, opportunity records that are marked as close last uh, you know and, mo and modified last week right so i go with the query so i go with this you know select statement let us build the query in the form of string first so to delete the opportunity what i need i need only id so where Right, so uh, this is a string, so which itself uh, has uh, the single quotes. So when a single quote is also part of your string, then we need to uh, escape it with a backslash character. Okay, and if you're going to have additional, so this is just a keyword. Right, so this is the string I have. Right, so now I'm going to pass this uh, uh, string as an argument to this method. So result of this, I'm going to return. Okay, I'm going to return. So this is going to return uh, the result in the uh, form of uh, a database dot Query locator object. Okay, so this is the one we are going to pass to the. Uh, so we get the data into this uh, uh, result, and that is going to be passed to the OPP list. So you can have here generic S object type or uh, the object with respect to okay the under context which object you are going to which object record you are going to process that object uh, uh, list of that object you will receive it in the execute method right so we are going to receive the collection of data not just one record right may or may not so we go with list so that's a predefined argument list of a subject and uh, database context What is the issue here? Okay, we are missing. All right, number five. Okay, semicolon is. Okay, missing written statement. Yes, we need to return return the result so that's a return type of the method okay so what is the objective of this uh, process i'm going to delete i'm going to delete whatever the record received by the execute method so And then your future, your finish method is optionally. You can have 
any statement uh, if you like to uh, perform any 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 logic you like to perform after all the records are processed all the records are processed right so your start will run once uh, in the batch of x and execute will run you know equal to the number of uh, batches uh, the whole record is divided right so suppose 1000 then it's going to run five times the five execute method will run okay so the finish will run at the end once all the execute are done once the whole process are completed then finish will run okay so you have to uh, yeah, delete the opp list here because that is where you are going to receive uh, right uh, every set of records every small set of records going to receive it in opp list so that's the one you are going to process if any process you like to uh, do against this record so this is a list you are going to process inside your execute method right so this is how you implement the batch of x how we are going to run the batch of x so there is a there is a standard way like how do you enqueue the job right so there is a standard way you will implement the batch of x uh, execute the batch of x we create the object and we go for a, a database method now in the queueable apex you go for system defined system uh, method belongs to system class so here you go for uh, a database method called execute batch and there you will pass the argument of your argument as your batch apex class object so you submit this and uh, we know where to monitor it will go to the queue so where did you monitor your feature method and queueable apex so there it right there you monitor it, okay it means a job so under your setup job apex job and you will see uh, okay it says uh, only one batch process right it might be less than 200 records so it just one one batch we processed okay so if you have uh, more than 200 records then you'll see if i have 300 records then 200 in one batch and 100 records will be in another batch so two batch okay it show here total number of batches will become two if you process uh, right say for example i process uh, uh, 500 uh, records right if i process uh, 500 records then how many batches you can expect uh, there it means how many execute method will run so it is in one batches and it's my second and there are three batches you'll see there are three batches will be processed so the batch of x the batch job is going to be one the batch job is going to be one but the total batches in that batch job is going to be you now how many number of execute method and how many right how many batches it divided so those many number of process will run so now all the process is going to be a separate transaction it it's going to have a it's going to have its own governor limit okay and this batch size is basically a default batch size 200 is a default batch, batch size but you can also uh, you can also uh, specify our own uh, you know or our, our custom batch size also by going with the optional parameter in your execute batch method batch method okay by default it's 200 if you like to process each batch just you know 10 records or 50 records any numbers from 1 to 200 1 to 2000 maximum i can go 2000 also okay so you can specify the batch effects uh, number of records to be processed in each execute method you can also specify as a second argument in your execute batch method okay so you can also specify number of records to be processed in the each small batches by going with the second optional parameter in the execute batch of x method is it clear is it clear to all of you
इधर है हरे हरे आदर नोट कर रहे थे आदर नोट आई विल शो यू टेक द नोट जस्ट वन मिनट मो so as a quick uh, okay recap the things how do you execute the batch effects i okay create the object for the class that implemented the interface and then you pass that as an argument to the execute batch uh, batch method belongs to database class and batch size you can optionally enter so what is the size you can give anything any number between 1 to 200 right the batch size can be anything between 1 1 and 200 2000 by default if you don't specify any then it takes uh, 200 as a default batch size it means how many how many number of records you can process in uh, okay you can let the process to uh, run uh, in one execute method okay and uh, it's it's going to return the id you can also get the id uh, you can check the async apex job right to check the status okay so that's what implemented this and uh, where to check the status we know there are two ways right i said the async apex job is going to have a row it's going to have a row in the object uh, async apex job so where you can pass the id and get the status the other way you manually go and monitor that's what we have seen and in case if i have the batch job submitted but i would like to uh, now stop the job it means it's in progress but i would like to abort the job i can go with the system dot abort job method and pass the id so get the id and pass id is an argument you can uh, uh, now break the job to run further and uh, and every execute method we have okay we have, we we seen like it's a discrete transaction it means separate transaction each transaction has its own governor limit then in case i would like to track the uh, i like to consolidate uh, the status of all the records processed in every execute batch execute pro method in small batches right i said if 1000 records you get in the start query then it divide it into by default uh, five different batches okay and each of these execute method five execute method will run right and all the execute method will not follow any sequence and will not have any state will not have any will not have any dependency right if that's a scenario then we cannot track any status within this uh, process right suppose i process an uh, opportunity in uh, okay an opportunity in a batch of x i like to sum up all the opportunity values uh, okay the opportunity value of the all the opportunity records that are processed in every execute method right in general we cannot we cannot track the status right if you sum up all the you have a you have a uh, you know uh, a statement to a logic to sum up the value here suppose i have a logic you know to sum up all the values here and finally you are going to get zero only finally you are going to get zero because by default the batch is a uh, stateless stateless it is not going to maintain any state between the two execute method so any changes you are going to made in one method will not be uh, okay will not be transferred to the another execute method 
in general your batch apex is cannot maintain cannot maintain any state between two execute method right example like if you like to sum up all the opportunity values or all the total number of records you processed i'd like to you know uh, i'd like to uh, send an email about all the status of number of records number of total uh, opportunities uh, total value of the amount right uh, i like to send email in my finish method i cannot do it in your batch fx in general in order to uh, transfer the state of the data from one execute to another execute okay if i, I say here one batch to another batch it means one execute to another execute right it, it means one execute to another execute we need to we need to implement one more interface we need to implement one more interface called database dot stateful interface okay i let, let's go with a different example so all you have to implement is one one more interface database dot stateful interface you have to implement right so when you implement stateful interface then we can track the status between the different execute method Okay, the interface name is called the database or state interface. We can implement n number of interfaces with the comma separated, right? So, okay, this is an, uh, an example uh, where, okay, this is an example where uh, I'm I'm summing up the method. I'm summing up the, uh, sorry, I'm summing up the amount for every opportunities that I'm processing in the batch effects. And finally, I'm going to, uh, insert that value into one custom object right the requirement is uh, you know for every batch where i run i would like to uh, you know store the uh, the date of the batch run and what many and uh, what are the total value of opportunity i processed in that batch as a row into the custom object right so this object is going to capture uh, you know the date of the batch fx uh, the batch fx run and uh, what are the total value of opportunity we process in that batch right so that's the object so we'll right I'll, i'm going to have one custom object and where i'm going to have uh, two fields name field okay in the text format i'm going to store the the data of you know the data of the run batch run and whatever the number of opportunity process in that batch in general if you capture this data this is going to have zero when it's going to have zero if you are not using database dot stateful interface if you are not going to use a database dot stateful interface then okay then it's going to have a just a zero value here because the execute method status okay the state the two execute method will not have any dependency will not have any dependency is it clear so we'll create one custom object and see how it works So I name the object as uh, opportunity values and use the standard field uh, as a, a run date, that's run date. Then I'm going to create one more additional field to capture the total number of uh, uh, total uh, amount uh, okay total value of the opportunity we processed in a batch so i go with currency field Okay, so the next. So I have a, a fields and object ready to insert the row. So the purpose of the object is to get it is used to store the 
uh, every day, right? Every run of batch of X, uh, batch of X, right? The, 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 the state is going to be a run date and the total value of opportunity processed. So, okay, so let's take this example. So it's just a, and I, just we are uh, get, right? That run the query and trying to understand whether we are able to track the status of the, get the, you know, all the records processed in that one particular batch at the end, at the finish method, right? Finally, I would like to have the status. Right. Finally, I'd like to know the consolidated status of uh, the records that I process in the particular batch. So that is my objective. So, so this is an example, but uh, right, we'll run without the interface, stateful interface. So where I have a an argument uh, a variable uh, you know to capture the final the total uh, opportunity that i'm processed here and i just initialize the variable and just a simple query get the amount and if amount value is greater then i not uh, sum up all the amount and finally i'm going to insert here i think this value the name i gave used right this value Okay, so it's process I process each batch I process just ten records. Right, so what are four ways you can uh, run the batch effects? Sorry, asynchronous process. You have a feature method, which is okay, which requires an annotation at feature uh, for the static method, and okay, and cube apex, which implements interface, cube interface, and batchable uh, batch apex, where you need to implement the interface called database dot batchable interface. Right and uh, a queueable apex is used to change the job one after the other, and which can accept a subject type of argument also. And feature method, uh, a long running process, and to avoid mixed DML exception. Right, any any process that would like to run asynchronously from the synchronous process, then you'll go for feature method. Right, your queueable apex basically you must implement the interface. But that doesn't record here, right? You just go for any process you'd like to run asynchronously. You just move that statement into your static method and have the feature annotation, right? That can be run asynchronously. But here we need an interface to be implemented, right? So that's the difference. It's going to return the ID, does not return ID, okay? And when you go for batch effects to process large volume of data, right? And uh, and in general, the batch of X uh, is not a, a stateful, right? Which, which will not track any status between the two execute method. Okay, that's that's what we are going to see. 
how to make it how to track the status between the two batches so for that we created one uh, custom object okay to check whether uh, we are able to Okay, so now uh, we we'll learn this process. Okay, so check this process, it's done or not. Okay, it is, uh, yeah, it is done, but it's process only one. Okay. Only one batch is done. Okay. I, I let me you know process in different batches. I just process only ten records in a batch. Right. I we might have right by default. I think it's more than fifty records at least we have in the opportunity object with amount value. Yeah. There are five batches as run. And then I'd like to uh, see whether the value has been inserted into the object or not. So as per my process, I'm calculating all the right amount value for each executed method, right? So finally, I'm expecting the total value here. So what is the field name? Oh, sorry, it's a name. Name. Standard field. No value at all, right? No records. Right? It's it's get zero because no state is maintained between these two execute method. So let's implement the interface.
state window base. So hopefully you'll see. Uh, okay, it's save, then it'll exit this process. Great. Okay. Yes, it's saved. So I run the process and see whether it's done. It's in hold status. Okay, it's processing. And it's okay, it's done. So you got uh, the total value of the operation is processed. Uh, okay, which might be the recent. You go with modify date or uh, create a date. Right, you'll see uh, the one which is run recently, right, uh, is at the bottom of the the last record. So which has the value. Okay, right. So we'll continue tomorrow. If you have any questions, we can wind up for the session today. We'll continue the uh, schedule level effects and uh, the new topic tomorrow. Hopefully, we'll done with the development part tomorrow. We'll see. <coughs> okay, I mean, uh, we'll connect one more weekend to see the deployment and the rest of the topics. Fine, is there any queries? Any queries? Everyone is able to follow this uh, asynchronous process. I'll upload the notes in the shadow tab as usual. Okay, in another five to ten minutes, I'll upload the notes. I'll consolidate the notes and upload it here. We have any queries? Right. So tomorrow, tomorrow connect at uh, uh, ten thirty sharp. Okay, ten thirty sharp. We'll start the session. Okay.